What's going on YouTube, it's James Ong here, and with the release of RimWorld version 1.0, it is finally time for my everything you need to know to survive on the Rim complete gameplay guide. Here we're going to be covering all of the basic things like food production, base design, managing work priorities, as well as trying to help you understand the possibilities of this open-ended diverse sandbox game where your experience is driven by the choices that you make and your colony, its journey and its story is uniquely yours. As with all of my guides, I'm going to be looking to make this extremely accessible, easy to understand and to the point, whilst also making sure to cover all of the finer details. If you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like, it does really help me out. And of course, you can subscribe for even more RimWorld content. So, without further ado, let's find out how we play RimWorld version 1.0. Alright, I'm going to be breaking this guide down into three key topics. Today, we're looking at colony safety and stability. Like I said, I not only want to inform you about how to play the game, but also give you inspiration for building your own colony and the many different directions that you can take in the game. This will be a three-part guide series, with the next video tackling colony growth and colony direction, and the final video in the series focusing on late-game colony goals. If you're revisiting this video and would like to jump to a specific topic, you can find all the topics discussed along with the timestamps in the description of the video. If you're new to the game, even if you are experienced with strategy and survival games, I highly recommend you starting on a jungle, swamp or forest biome of some description because here you'll have fairly readily available food sources and this will allow you to experience more of what the game has to offer. When choosing your starting spot, take something with a fairly generous growing period so that you can grow food outdoors for most of the year round. Experienced RimWorld players, what do you recommend for new players to do for their first game? And what were some of the things that you wished you knew before you started playing? Help a new player out down in the comments section below. In any game, your first priority is going to be getting your colonists safe. How you achieve this is going to vary slightly with each different scenario, but all colonies will always need food, shelter and defences. To get started, make a room of some description that can serve as your starting temporary living quarters. Later, this room can become maybe a combined rec room and dining room, which is a living space that all colonies will have. You'll notice that your map probably has some old structures already built somewhere on it. You could claim one of these as your own, and Using one of these as your starting point for your colony can be a great way of you saving some time and labour early on. Just be smart about any messages suggesting one of those larger looking structures may have something terrible and foreboding lurking inside. Whilst Rimworld does like to joke around a little, it can have a somewhat dark sense of humour. So now that you've found a little room to call your own, or have just built one for yourself, Go ahead and throw down some sleeping spots inside, as well as a stockpile to put all of your things into. It might be a good idea to arm your colonists now as well. Whilst it is important to start fairly efficiently and get things done in a somewhat timely manner, you do have some leeway in the beginning of the game, as your colonists will have some initial optimism about your colony's chances, and will also have fairly low expectations. Next, I like to throw down a stone cutting table either in this initial room or by building or claiming another small room nearby. You really won't need a lot of space for this, but stone cutting is a very, very important early job in my opinion, basically because of fire, and <laughs> I'll talk about that in a bit more detail later. It's now a good time to take a look at your work priorities. Open up your work tab from down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen and hit the red X next to the manual priorities, changing it to a tick. This will give you more control over your colonists. 
Jobs to the left of the work pane will be done first, so here you'll see things like firefighting and doctoring, which are obviously pretty high priority emergency type jobs that you want to do absolutely immediately when they do come up. And then the less urgently pressing tasks like crafting are found towards the end of the work pane. With manual priorities, you can get someone to do a lower priority task before one placed ahead of it in the work pane. For example, you might want a colonist to do crafting before they do construction. So you could set crafting to a higher manual priority to have it happen before constructing. Manual priorities are sorted by ascending order, with something assigned as a 1 being the highest priority job and 4 being the lowest. So work out what each colonist is good at and tweak their priorities accordingly. Here you can see an example of how I might typically handle a work queue. Also remember that even on the very hardest of difficulties, your first raid will always be a single opponent armed with a melee weapon. This means that you have some time to get settled in and get the basic infrastructure of your colony set up. The first jobs that you're going to want to be getting started with is, like I said, the stone cutting so that you can build all of your buildings out of stone. Also, growing some food, building a kitchen, building another smaller room nearby for butchering, a large refrigerator to keep perishable foods in, a source of electricity, bedrooms for all of your colonists, and then a larger space for storing the majority of your stuff in. The first crop that I suggest you grow is strawberries, provided you've got a colonist with the skill, because these can be eaten straight away without needing any meal preparation. When you've got all of this set up, your temporary living space can then become your combined dining room slash rec room, and you've got yourself a fantastic start towards a strong and successful colony. Of course, remember this is just a template for you to work from, and there's always flexibility for some experimentation with exactly what you want to do initially, and different scenarios and different map biomes are going to present you with different challenges and different priorities. Now let's talk about your food supply. Food availability will vary pretty widely depending on the map biome and weather conditions. On some maps, food is just readily and easily available. On others, it can be extremely difficult to get enough to support your colonists. But on these slightly more forgiving maps, growing food is as simple as dropping down a grow zone, then selecting the type of crop that you wish to grow. Note the I icon next to the crop type. You're going to see this a lot throughout the game, and this can be a great way for you to get more information about specific items in game. Now growing food on absolutely any biome is going to be your best and easiest way of producing consistent, reliable food for your colony. You can also hunt for food, but hunting should supplement your colony's food supply, and particularly be used for producing fine meals, which are a better quality meal that will make your colonists happier and give them slightly better nutrition value. A pro tip here, and something that I always like to do when possible, is set my simple meal bills to use only vegetarian foods, saving the meat for my fine meal bills only. Of course, you want to make sure you've got a steady and reliable supply of vegetables before you do this, but it shouldn't take you too long to get this established, and it can really help to increase the amount of fine meals that your colony is able to produce. So how much food do you need to grow for your colony? This is actually quite difficult to give a definitive answer to because there's a lot of factors involved and many, many disasters which can occur at any time which will alter how much food you might need. So the simple answer is a lot of food and then a lot more food and then a lot more again. In this case, more is pretty much always better. But if you want an actual number, a 7x7 seven seven grow zone producing food year round will give roughly enough food for a single colonist or for hydroponic grow setups, three hydro basins per colonist will produce roughly on par with a colonist needs. But again, disasters and then even more disasters are just a guaranteed part of life out on the rim 
particularly when you're dealing with the higher difficulty levels. So always make more food. Also remember that on many maps, winter is a thing, and if you've not got to the point of setting up indoor growing areas for the colony, you won't be producing food from your crops during the winter. There's also blights, cold snaps, wildfires, fires as the result of arson, and many, many other things which can destroy your crops or halt your ability to produce food. So always, always have a food surplus if at all possible. And here we come to setting up your freezer. This is pretty simple. You just need to make a room with an air conditioner pumping cold air into it and set the air conditioner's temperature to negative four degrees. Make sure you're thinking about where you're venting your hot air because pumping hot air into an enclosed room might cause the temperature in that room to spike way above the desirable levels. However, on extremely cold maps, you can actually use this hot air to your benefit, so do keep that in mind. Make sure that your freezer is as large as possible. A minimum of a 10 by 10 tile space is probably a good starting point, but you can certainly go larger than this. If one air conditioner isn't enough to maintain below zero temperature in your freezer, then you can add a second one or use double thickness walls to provide more temperature insulation. Note that tribal colonies can't construct air conditioners at the beginning of the game. However, they can make pemmican, which is a long lasting meal type that won't need refrigeration. Let's talk briefly about work bills. These are used to order your colonists to make specific items in game or control how much of that particular item they'll be making, as well as to order things like surgeries. As we've got a kitchen set up here, we can set a work bill on our stove to produce meals for our colony. All of these stoves and workbenches use bills in pretty much the same way, so later you'll be setting bills in your brewery to make sweet, sweet beer, bills on your machining table to make assault rifles, bills to install a new kidney on that colonist who broke down and became a raging alcoholic, bills to make advanced power armors, to make advanced bionic parts to replace those inevitable missing limbs, or to make yourself a bionic man, the list goes on. But let's start with setting up a bill to feed our people. Bills are set in order of priority with the topmost bill being filled first. So make this first bill here a bill for fine meals as this is the best overall food type. Set this bill even if you don't have the skill or the ingredients to make it, as eventually you will and as soon as it's possible, you want to be making this meal type as your top priority. In the bills, you can adjust how many of the item you want to make or set a target quantity you want to try and achieve. There's also options for pausing and resuming the bills at certain quantities, so work out how much of something you want to make and what's going to work best for your colony. I'd be aiming at a minimum of 10 surplus meals per colonist, but again as we mentioned earlier, more is pretty much always better here, so stock that freezer with as many prepared meals as you can manage. Now that we have somewhere to sleep, somewhere to store our stuff, a place to make food and to store food, as well as some electricity, let's start trying to think about how we can make our colony safe. Some simple ways we can give a colony more teeth is just by doing simple things like buying or crafting better weapons, but what I really want to focus on here is traps, walls and turrets. Traps and walls are extremely powerful and are particularly great because any colony can build them without needing to research any technologies. Most players will create a kill box within their base, which is an area where they look to invite attackers into to be horribly murdered by traps and turrets. To make a kill box, you first need to build a wall around your colony, leaving a small space for attacking pawns to come in through. This opening should funnel the attacking pawns into a large walled off open area filled with turrets once you can build them, and maybe a spot for some armed colonists to stand as well. It's a good idea to have your turret's power supply separated from your main power grid by a switch, 
This way you can turn off your turrets when you're not using them. Your traps should be placed in a narrow corridor near to the entrance of your kill box. You'll also want to design the corridor so that your colonist can get to each trap to reset it without stepping on the other traps while they're trying to get there. You can see how I normally achieve this here, but I'm sure there's many different ways for you to design this. I found that six traps is the most an attacker will be willing to walk through in a narrow corridor like this. Any more and it just becomes too obvious and the attacker will avoid the area, nullifying your kill box. So let's find out how well our kill box actually does work. This is something that I guess I just want to spend a little bit of extra time on because I feel like if you understand how to keep yourself safe, then any other part of the game that you're maybe struggling with or working on perfecting or something, you then have a little bit more time to just, you know, relax and be safe and understand uh, and work on understanding that other part of the game. So let's, yeah, let's talk about our kill box. Let's test our kill box out and see how well it can work. Now, we have built, as you can see, we've built a wall around our colony here. Now, some tips for building walls. You can, like I've done here, you can use um, some of the natural structure as part of your wall as well to give yourself less work to do. So we've done that here, we've done that down here, um, and we've also incorporated our buildings into part of our wall. So that's something that I'll like to do, is like plan where I'm doing building my buildings and then just throw walls in between them. This kill box here could also be a bit larger. It's not hugely, hugely massive, um, but it is big enough. Now, what we're going to do, the first raid we're going to test it on, I'll throw a fairly decent raid at it, and I'm going to leave the guns off. So, I'm going to show you how powerful the kill box is completely on its own without the gun technology. So, if you didn't get time to research the guns, don't worry, really. If you throw a friggin' wall up, if you make some traps like I've done here with the doors in here like I've got so that the colonists can come in to reset these without standing on the other ones then yeah it's it's going to work really really well as we're going to see right here here we go now I'm not sure how big this will be okay it's just gonna be one person what I will actually do is use the dev tools here to add some extra characters in um, I can't remember what sort these were, but let's just add, you know what, let's add some mercenary gunners in here. So I think this guy's, okay, this guy's a melee character, but let's add three other guys with guns there. So we're now outnumbered. Let's recruit our people. Are these guys going to attack absolutely immediately? It looks like they are, that's good. So, let's show how friggin' powerful our stuff is here. Honestly, honestly. So these traps, they're so powerful. You can see this guy's already dead. We're going to kill another one, and then immediately they just flee. If you kill half of a group, then they'll just decide to flee absolutely straight away, and you won't have any problems. So no one even makes it into our base there. Let's throw a much bigger raid at this and see how it can go. All right, the group of tribes people is coming towards us. Hopefully these guys don't wait too long. Awesome, they're coming now as well. All right. So we've got two. Oh, and then they fight each other. Of course they do. All right. Well, the tribes people flee. This um, group with guns here is a big group. So this is going to be a good test here. So one goes down in the traps. We'll lose one more into a trap probably. And now our guns start firing. Uh, of course, this character is a melee character. Oh, something I could have done is put a door here, so that, because something I do like to do is... Well, actually, let's have you come in here and attack people. But yeah, some something I do like to do sometimes is have a little secret door for people to, um... for melee characters to run through and attack people like, like these guys fleeing now. But there, you can see a completely unrealistic early game raid. We're able to, um completely obliterate here. Now, people are injured, of course. I could have been, though, you know, I could have been a lot more um, conservative and stuff with this. I'm not really trying to play super efficiently. 
All of these guys are just bruised. No one's even been shot. So you can see how truly, truly powerful the kill box setup actually is. So with all of these basic necessities down, let's finish by talking about some general tips for managing your colony and staying safe. One of the things that really caught me off guard in one of my first games was fire. <laughs> so here we've built everything out of stone, but let's see how this base would cope with fire if it was made out of wood. Meet Rogers. He's a friendly looking fellow at first glance. When Rogers came by and asked to join the colony, no one can think of a reason why he shouldn't. But you see, Rogers has this little quirk. Most of the time, he's a chill, affable, easygoing sort of chap. But every now and then, he has these little mood swings. And he decides that he needs to burn everything down around him. The fire mechanic is actually something that I really love in this game. And yeah, it was something that caught me pretty off guard in one of my early colonies. If a fire like gets going it can just spread so damn fast and just get totally out of control before you even know it. It's actually like it's not uncommon to see huge portions of the map just get completely obliterated by fire and if one of these really large wildfires makes it to your colony it can spell trouble pretty damn quickly. Uh, especially if everything in your base is made out of wood, like it is here. Now, some early text you might want to research. Let's have a look in the research tree here. Obviously, we start with stone cutting here, and most of my advice here is based off of the crash landed start. If you were starting a tribal colony, perhaps, the stone cutting would definitely be an early one that you might want to go for. Battery is something that situationally we might want to do. With this colony I'm using wood fueled generators, so I probably don't need battery. If I was using wind power I would definitely want battery or solar power for that matter as well. Obviously solar power I do need to research, which again if I'm using wind I might want to add some solar power in there as well. The main thing that I think you probably want to prioritise is heading towards gun turrets. If you can get to the point of having finished gun turrets within a year, within a year of being on the colony, on the map, then I think you're pretty well going to be 100% safe for that first year, provided you've got your wall up and got your kill box happening, that sort of thing. The other tech that you could look to prioritize is microelectronics, because this gives you, well, access to the later game techs, as well as allowing you to do orbital trade, which is quite a significant thing. It is a really nice thing to have. Other than that, that's all you really need to remain safe. And honestly, especially with a crash landed start, you don't really need to hardcore research at the beginning. Um, so you can concentrate on doing the other jobs in your colony. Also, as you're getting started, try not to overextend. So keep your building small and maybe even start on a mountainous map as well and use some of the natural bottlenecks in the terrain to help with walling yourself in. Also, remember that digging into the mountain can awaken some of those nasty bugs. So maybe consider building outside until you feel you're ready to deal with that. Finding good colonists is also going to help you out. So don't be afraid to randomise a bit or even a lot at the start of the game, especially when you're just starting out and still learning the game. And save your medicine for dealing with plagues and diseases. So try and grow some herbal meds when you can, when you have the skill for it, and use this to treat things like cuts and bruises. Even if you get a cut and a bruise and you don't have herbal meds, just treat it without the medicine. Treat it with no medicine whatsoever. And save that medicine for when you want to perform a surgery or if you get really bad diseases or plagues. 
Also, you should look at getting around to building a hospital, which is really going to help with just generally treating disease and injury, because even things like good lighting and cleanliness, they actually affect how well you're able to treat all the various injuries and diseases. With everything we've covered in part one, you're now ready to build a colony that will be safe and stable. There's many, many more things for this colony to be getting on with that I could have talked about here, but I wanted to keep this simple, and with everything that you've learned so far, you're now equipped to deal with and discover these things on your own. So get out there and exploit the map for its resources, send caravans off into the world, hunt, mine, chop down trees, and turn all of these resources into more crafting, growing more crops, brewing beers, making drugs, researching more technologies, and shaping your colony into everything that you want it to be. Thank you very much for watching part one of my guide to playing RimWorld version 1.0. With all of the basic things out of the way, in part two, we will be focusing on growing your colony and finding direction in the open-ended sandbox. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please do leave a like, it does really help me out. And of course, you can subscribe for even more RimWorld, or check out one of my other videos like this one on planning for placing geothermal power generators. Again, thank you very much for watching and I do hope to see you in another video.